Brethren, if you will, let's turn back to Genesis 23. Genesis 23. I thought this was fitting that tomorrow will be the burial of the Queen of England. And we're going to read today about the burial of Sarah. Picture the Lord's church throughout time. and The sure resting place that she was given. I want to go through this. I just want to touch on a few things. I always told you, I said, if you, if you want to, if you've got questions, you got questions? How about this? Sit underneath the sound of the gospel. Sit underneath the, the, God's man in that time. If it ain't here somewhere else, move there. Go support them. Sit underneath the sound of the gospel, and over time, all your questions will be answered. It may take six weeks. It may take six months. It may take six years, 16 years. I don't know. But throughout time, I won't know it's being answered, but it'll be answered for you. I'm going to say some things this morning. It's going to take guts to say in this part of the world. It ain't don't take no guts where land's $500 an acre in eastern Kentucky. <laughs> you can put a whole plot of your family out there. That ain't, that ain't no big deal. What I'm going to say today is going to take some, take some backbone. I pray the Lord will give it to me. This is a sure resting place of Sarah and of the Lord's people. This is approaching, it's just past, I'm glad I don't have an accurate number. I've deleted several messages and several of my notes I threw away. A couple times I've preached off of handwritten notes and sometimes I haven't had notes. This is about the 400th time I've stood in front of you and preached to you. <laughs> That's a bunch, eh? Just here in Genesis alone, this is about the 50th time we've met together and I've stood up in front of you and spoke to you from the book of Genesis. At least, conservatively, that's 25 hours I've talked to you about Genesis. About what the Lord's done. What He's done throughout time to His people, with His people, for His name's sake. We get one more today, don't we? I pray the Lord let us see our Redeemer once again in this hour. I'm going to make some comments as we go through this. And then I want to run as fast as I can. They need said... I'm going to run as fast as I can with the gospel. Is that all right? I hope I don't keep you too long. Genesis 23, we'll begin in verse 1. And Sarah was 107 and 20 years old. That's the only lady buried in the scriptures with recorded age. 127 years old. Well, I could get into the numerology of that. Man's days are limited to 120. Seven's perfection. And I can sit there and study that till I miss Christ, clean-hearted. You get that? She lived a long time. Her and Abraham was married at least 100 years. Wasn't it? 110 years maybe? 105? Long time they've been married. What? She was 107 and 20 years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah. And their last trial that was recorded was Ishmael being kicked out. And then Isaac... Going up that mountain with his father. And for at least 25 years, no trials. Just peace. Just peace. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> it's 25 years of just worshiping God. Living in a community. Gathering with his people. Preaching the word. Rejoicing in him. For 127 years, Sarah walked this earth. And she was a feisty one. It was time she... Spoke out a little bit and she mocked God, laughed, said, how am I going to have a child? And then the Lord told Abraham why she laughed. And then she answered. So I wasn't laughing. Hold on now. And then she saw Ishmael laughing at that son that the Lord had promised. And she said, you take that bond woman and Ishmael and kick him out of here. That bond woman can't be, the bond child can't be with the free child. Can't mix worse grapes. Get him out of here. She was right in doing so. In the Old Testament, it shows so much sin. The New Testament, oh, she was so forgiving, wasn't she? The faith of Sarah. Think how forgiving she was. Twice her husband sent her off to be in a harem. She was so gracious and forgave him. Stayed with him. She called him Lord. How did she do that? It ain't got squat to do with Abraham. She said, what if every time I told you to do something, you say, yes, Christ. Not to me, but... That's who's speaking it, right? She knew that. She knew that was who, who, she, who had put Abraham over her. She knew the Lord. She believed him. Once life was put in her, she mocked before, and then she said, oh, no. 
laughed. <laughs> Look what he did. Oh, it's wonderful. Life was put in her. That's when it happened. That's when it happened. Verse 2 says, And Sarah died, and Kerjath Ar Arba, the same as Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. He wept for her. He wept for his wife. God's prophets, once the law comes about, God's prophets are not allowed to touch a dead body unless it was close family. My brother Don said whenever a prophet's spouse or child died, they weren't supposed to act like their cat died. They could mourn like somebody else could. Abraham came to mourn his wife, to weep for her. If the Lord takes Kimberly first, I'm going to weep. Not for her that she's in a bad place. Or I'll rejoice for that. I'm going to weep for me. Miss my friend that's been with me for so long. I'm going to weep for her. And if I go first, I hope she'll weep a little bit. <laughs> At least one or two tears, right? But he wept for her. And Abraham stood up from before his dead and spake unto the sons of Heth, saying, I'm a stranger and a sojourner with you. Where's he at? Land of Canaan, wasn't he? Ain't that his land? They said, this is my land. Y'all going to give me what rightfully is mine. <laughs> I demand it. You're going to do it my way. Well, what we ought to learn from Abraham. He said, I'm a stranger here. I'm a sojourner with you. Give me a possession of burying place with you that I may bury my dead out of sight. He was respectful to those around him. He wasn't entitled, was he? Was he entitled? It's my right. I, it's my right to bury my wife. Now you give me some land. No, he was respectful. He said, I'm just a visitor here. I'm just sojourning. I'm passing through. Give me a possession of a burial place with you. Verse 5 says, And the children of Heth answering Abraham, said unto him, Hear us, my Lord, thou art a mighty prince among us. Remember what we saw with Abimelech last week? For five years, Abraham lived in the sight of Abimelech. And Abimelech said, I know you're God's man. What about those great big trials? He saw them, but he saw him on a Tuesday morning too, didn't he? He saw how he dealt with the, the, the greeter at Costco or how he, how he dealt with that person down there pumping gas or that bum on the street or that prostitute that bumped into his car. <laughs> he saw him day in and day out. And he said, I know God's with you. And these men here, these children of Heth, they said, my Lord, thou art a mighty prince among us. They respected that man. Why? Because he walked through this world like a man that believed God. He wasn't playing religion on the weekends. Well, that's what he does then. When I ask Monday, I've got to get my work mind on. No, he's a child of God on Mondays too, just the same as he was Sunday. <laughs> they wasn't no different. They knew that. They didn't go to church with him. They didn't believe the God he believed, but they respected him. He believed God. He acted on his word. They said, Hear us, my Lord. Thou art a mighty prince among us. In the choice of our sepulchers, bury thy dead. You go pick the best spot you want. We'll give it to you. It's, a, it's yours. None of us shall withhold from thee his sepulcher but that thou mayest bury thy dead. There ain't no one of us. It don't matter who you ask. If you say, I want your best sepulcher, they're going to say yes. You go pick which one. We love you, Abraham. We love you. And Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, even to the children of Heth. Not that he bowed to them. He bowed himself. He humbled himself to these people. He wasn't uppity. You get that? He bowed himself. And he communed with them, saying, If it be your mind that I should bury my dead out of my sight. He didn't want to see Sarah corrupted. He didn't want to see that body bloating. There was a time limit on this. And he wanted to get her, get her buried, get out of sight. Remember her as she was. I bury my dead out of sight. Hear me, I entreat thee, entreat for me to Ephron, the son of Zoar, that he might give to me the cave of Machpelah. I don't want to get on a word study. Machpelah, you know what that means? Double. I want the cave of double. This sure resting place he's about to secure, that's the same place where it says we have received double for all our sins. Same word. He said, I want the cave of Machpelah, which he hath, which is in the end of his field. For as much money as it is worth, he shall give it me for a possession of a burying place among you. Whatever it's worth, that's what I'll pay. You listen to me. Did Abraham say, can I get a 10% discount? Because this is for the church. That's cheapening, isn't it? Don't you do that. You pay full price. Lord ain't broke. All money's his money. If we know the God 
God, whose earth and the firmness thereof is his, I'll pay whatever that's worth. It'll be fine. Okay? <laughs> Don't do that. And Ephron dwelt among the children of Heth, and Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the audience of the children of Heth. Oh, Ephron, come down there. And he answered in front of everybody. Even of all that went at the gate of this city, saying, Nay, my Lord, hear me. I've heard you, hear me. The field give I thee. And the cave that is therein, that cave you want, I give it thee. I'll just give it to you. In the presence of the sons of my people, give I it thee. Bury thy dead. I'm going to give this to you. That's what you want? You just take it. You ain't paying me no fair market price. You take it. I'm going to give it to you. Didn't this happen before with Abraham? That king of Sodom? That's the first thing that comes to my mind. After that battle of the four kings at the feet of five kings, and he, him and 318 men went and killed all those people, recovered Lot, recovered all the people of Sodom. The king of Sodom come to him and said, I'm going to make you wealthy. Take it. Take anything you want. Take all the spoils you want. Take it. And he said, I ain't going to dare do that. <laughs> Say you made Abraham great. No. And he was fearful, wasn't he? This man came and said, take it. I give it to you. I give it to you. I give it to you. Everybody's watching me give this to you. Ain't you supposed to not let the right hand know what the left hand's doing? I know. And Abraham bowed himself down before the people of the land. And he spake unto Ephron in the audience of the people of the land, saying, but if thou... We'll give it. That's in italics, isn't it? Let's read it without that. Verse 13. But if thou, I pray thee, hear me. If you'll listen to me, you keep saying all these good things about me and how great I am. You're so thankful I'm here with you. And you'll do all this stuff for me. Why don't you listen to me? Why don't you just do what I tell you? Will you listen to me? But if thou, I pray thee, hear me, I will give thee money for the field. Take it of me, and I'll bury their dead. I'm going to pay you, or this ain't happening. And Ephron answered Abraham, saying unto him, My Lord, hearken unto me. <laughs> you keep calling. This is God's prophet looking at him. And he says, You, you can talk me up good. Won't you hear what I have to tell you? We, you listen to me. <laughs> ain't nothing changed. You listen to me. i got to talk now. My Lord, hearken unto me. Verse 15, The land is worth 400 shekels of silver. You know how much that is? She was buried. God devoted a whole chapter to Sarah being buried. He gave 20 verses to this. Kevin Barry, I know out here in California, me and Cameron have been looking at plots. It ain't cheap as it is back home. It's expensive, isn't it? You know how much 400 shekels is? $103,000 in today's money. Well, actually 2019, I don't know what it is now. That's expensive, isn't it? That cost a lot? $100,000. That's a lot. Well, we're going to see what the great, great price was, what this represents here in a minute. This was the first financial transaction we hear recorded. He said, my Lord, hearken unto me, this land's worth 400 shekels of silver. It's worth $100,000. But what's that between me and you? <laughs> You're wealthy. I'm wealthy. I ain't worried about no $100,000. I like you. Bury therefore thy dead. Ephron's getting up on a pedestal a little bit, isn't he? Man, he's wearing his halo so tight, he's giving other people around him a headache. <laughs> and Abraham hearkened unto Ephron, and Abraham weighed to Ephron the silver. He didn't even pay attention to him. Didn't even answer him. He just did what, what was right. He did not explain. He did not complain. He did what was right. And Abraham hearkened unto Ephron, and Abraham weighed to Ephron the silver, which he had named in the audience of the sons of Heth. 400 shekels of silver. Current money with the merchant. He was current with the merchant. He wasn't in arrears. He was paid up in full. And the field of Ephron, which was in Machpelah, which was before Mamre, the field and the cave that was therein, and all the trees that were in the field. He got the field, he got the cave, he got all the trees, and all the borders round about, they were made sure unto Abraham. There's no punctuation there. You see that? In verse 17, it was made sure unto Abraham for possession in the presence of the children of Heth before all that went in at the gate of his city. And after this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field in Machpelah before Mamre, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan. And the field and the cave that is therein were made sure unto Abraham for a possession of a burying place 
by the sons of Heth. This place, this shore, this one that was made shore. We're going to see at the end what that means. This resting place that was made shore unto Abraham. This is where he buried Sarah. This is where he buried Isaac and Rebekah and Jacob. A whole bunch of them put in the same place, isn't it? Same place. They're buried there in this cave. I don't want to be dogmatic about this because the scriptures aren't, but they're consistent. Our Lord was buried in the ground. When we profess Christ, once we believe and we profess Him in believer's baptism under the truth as we're commanded to by our Lord, we go under the water because He was buried. We were buried in Him. His prophets, they were buried. I will be buried. I'm going to be put in the ground. Face up. (laughs) Look up in that day. And hope of the resurrection with great care. With great care. That's how we treat our dead, with great care and respect. People say, well, old Saul and his boys were brought back and they burned them when they got them from the Philistines. Yeah, they did that so their bodies wouldn't be taken back from the Philistines and they buried the bones. Well, King Asa, they had a great fire for him. Yeah, they had a big bonfire full of incense. Doesn't say nothing. It said in Chronicles, they buried him. They buried him. Well, it's expensive. Great cost for Abraham, wasn't it? Great cost in our day. What was the cost of Christ being buried? Almighty God coming to this earth and dying and going into the ground. Oh, man. That's heavy, isn't it? Christ's burial was planned. Great care was taken. Joseph of Arimathea. Oh, Nicodemus out there. 100 pounds of aloe myrrh. You ain't going to hide that in a a coat pocket. You know that? (laughs) I bought 100 pounds of chicken feed the other day, and I had one on each shoulder. (laughs) You ain't going to hide it. That stuff's kind of condensed. I don't know how big aloe and myrrh is, but it's going to be a lot. People's going to know. It's going to show on you. It's going to come out. This is not just a discussion about biblical truth, about biblical burial. That's not what this is. This isn't a bedtime story for somebody just to, to fill some time. The Lord didn't waste 20 verses here to tell us about how Sarah was buried just so we knew what cave she would in if we want to go dig it up. The gospel. You get that? How you dress, how we dress, that's the gospel. We are robed in Christ's righteousness, isn't it? Ain't much for me to call my hair a little bit. <laughs> Not wear pajamas to church. <laughs> I'll know better. I don't need to tell us things. We're robed in his righteousness. He speaks life in how we speak. Do we blaspheme him? Say so God's trying to do something. Boy, God just won't you just let God? Nonsense. Not the God of the Bible, is it? That's not the God we know. What about how we're, how we're baptized? Baptismo, immersion. I'm immersed because I'm immersed in Christ. Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. I'm going to come <laughs> Yes, Lord. Obey him. What about the Lord's table? We don't take grape juice. Well, Dr. Welch had a good game play. Just so happened the fellow that came up with that heretical doctrine is the one that invented pasteurized grape juice. <laughs> That's convenient, isn't it? Follow the money. <laughs> nonsense I'll be buried as my Lord was because this is the gospel this is, here's what was promised to his children not just Sarah not just Adam to you who believe to me this is the good, no, good news to those that will die in Christ this is a promised land where was she buried <laughs> what did the Lord tell Abraham he said, you're going to go to a land I'm going to give you. And get up on top of that mountain. You see everything around you? Your seed's going to inhabit this. And he said, I'm a sojourner there. Wait a second. Which, which one is it? <laughs> the Lord gave him that land, Canaan. That's where they was. He's talking about spiritual Canaan, isn't it? His spiritual seed. Sarah was buried in the promised place. That sure resting place, it was promised. Look here in verse 2. And Sarah died in Kirjath Arba. The same was Hebron in the land of Canaan. Sarah was to rest in the promised place of Canaan. And it was made sure. Made sure. Does that mean it was certain? It sure does. There's another surety we have and it was made sure. Paul tells us in Galatians 3, For the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise. There's something you've got to do to be buried, to have a sure resting place. You've got to shore up. You've got to make, make yourself right with God. Well, now I, I got to start doing this. I got to start doing that. I got to start. Doing... Well, if that's by the law, there's no inheritance. 
He said, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. What sure resting place does Abraham have? What God promised. What sure resting place does a believer have right now in 2022? God's promise. That's what we have. To believers, the believer's place of rest was determined before sin ever entered into the garden. That's what we looked at this morning, wasn't it? Because of his namesake, that's where it all started. Paul said, For the children not yet being born, neither having done any good nor evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. That one that promised is the one that calls. That one that calls is the one that sanctifies. That one that sanctifies is the one that redeems. The one that redeems is the one that keeps you faithful to the end. <laughs> well, they, they used to be faithful. They used to preach the gospel. They used to do that. No, the Lord's people are faithful to the end, ain't they? Looking unto Christ. If a sinner is going to have a sure resting place, it must be founded on the promise of Almighty God. It's got to be that eternal promise. Like at Samuel 23, it says, Although my house be not so with God, the last words of David. And he's talking about his body. Because there's a couple, a couple of children he had that was pretty good. Isn't it? <laughs> Although my house be not so with God, yet he hath made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and sure, for this is all my salvation, this is all my desire, desire although he make it not to grow. I don't feel... Like I am joyous all the time. Lord ain't made that grow yet. It don't matter. He's still all my desire. Why? He made a covenant. He promised. <laughs> that sure resting place is because He done it. That's the same for all who believe. Every one of them. Isaiah wrote of that. He said, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye into the waters. He that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Come ye and buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in goodness. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. How long is everlasting? When did that start? <laughs> well, uh, infinity that way, and infinity that way. Our minds can't wrap around. Our computers can't compute that. Can they? That covenant full time, it's the promise, the everlasting promise that he gave. Our rest is founded on the word of God, not the works of our hands. On his promise, his covenant, his doing, and not ours. So first, that place that, place that Sarah was laid, that was the place of promise. That's what the Lord said was going to happen. I'm going to give you this land. That's where you're going to be. That's where your children are going to be. That's where she was put. Second, it was purchased. It was The full price was paid for this resting place. It says in verse 8, Genesis 23, 8. And he communed with them, saying, If it be your mind that I should bury my dead out of sight, hear me, and entreat for me to Ephron, the son of Zoar, that he may give me the cave of Machpelah, which he hath, which is in the end of his field, for as much money as it's worth, he shall give it to me for the possession of a burying place amongst you. Full price was paid for where Sarah was buried. And it was expensive too. Abraham got up early. He, he minded his pennies and the dollars took care of themselves. He sweated on his brow and he saved up to serve God and he had a place to put his wife. You get that? That's the practical side of it. Jesus paid it all. Not half and you pay the other half. Not I'll pay 99 pennies, and you've got to pay the last penny to make a dollar. He paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Not most of it. All the way. What's in the hand of the believer to do? When the full price of redemption, of a sure resting place, an eternal resting place... What's the believer to do when we see that it's all paid? It is finished. What did John tell us? Believe Christ, love you, brethren. That's part of them 400 messages I preached to you. And I did that on purpose. I come here preaching 1 John. <laughs> believe Christ and love you, brethren. He said it's finished. Amen. I believe that. Why? Because I believe Him. It's not a fact. It's a person. And I believe the person because I know the person. As theologians study, I study God. You Oh, how can you study somebody you don't know? 
You don't believe what he says or you do it. <laughs> if I said that ceiling's going to fall right here in two minutes, if I really believed that, I'd take a step over, wouldn't I? That's just, chicken's got a head that big, got enough sense to get out of the rain, don't it? He said, finished, I believe that because I believe him. And you who believe him too, we walk in agreement. I believe what he says in his word. may not understand it, but it's so. <laughs> There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. What's it going to be like, Kevin? I don't know. Give me 60 years, I'll tell you all about it. Sometime in that, in that time frame, I'll know. I don't know, but I believe him. And it's going to be better than I could think because I'm going to be with him. I'm going to be made like him. Can you imagine that? You're going to be without sin, child of God. What's that like? Uh -huh. well, I don't know. <laughs> you believe it? I sure do. And I have anything to do with it. You believe that? <laughs> I believe that too. If we agree with those things, we walk in agreement. We're fellows in the same ship. If I'm in one ship and you're in another ship and I say, let's, be, let's have some fellowship. You ain't in the same ship. <laughs> Gotta be together. We're fitly framed together. Lord takes those stones and hands don't touch it. He rubs them together. And there's going to be little bits and pieces flying off as they're rubbed together. He fitly frames us together. We are united in Christ, made one by His blood. We are family, made family by His dying. That's what He said on the cross. He knew the pain His mother was going to suffer. Watched her son die there. He saw His mother, and He saw His disciples standing by Him. There was John. And He loved Him. And He said to His mother, Woman, behold thy son. Physical son is going to die on the cross today. You see John? Right there is your son. And he said to his disciple, John, behold thy mother. Y'all family now. And from that hour, that disciple took her in his own home. You're mine now. You're family. Family first. Ain't that right, Paul? <laughs> family first, buddy. This is family now. Fellows in the same ship. Our Lord said, Mark 10, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, but he shall receive an hundredfold now in this time. Does that mean now? That means now in this time. Houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions. It's going to sting a little bit. It ain't going to be just little roses all the time. And in the world to come, you know what they're going to get? Eternal life. Right, we have, you have eternal life, and I have eternal life right now. Well, what's a biscuit? What's a bag of dog food? <laughs> you need your car? Take mine. If you, wreck it, if you scratch it, total it. I got good insurance. It don't matter. What was purchased? For starters, redemption was, wasn't it? Are you your own, or are you bought with a price? I'm my own man. Stomp your foot. Oh, we bought with the price. We've been redeemed. We've been purchased. We're given robe, that robe of righteousness of Christ. We're covered in Him. And what a price that came out. Our redemption was expensive. That righteousness was expensive. How expensive was it? We were made the righteousness of God in Christ. At what cost? What price? He was made sin. For us who knew no sin. You want to, you got a good uh, calculator? You got a good slide rule you can figure out how much that costs? It's expensive, ain't it? Knowing the person that did this, knowing the work of Christ, knowing that love, that everlasting love, where he loved us, <laughs> made us children. Now we have some wisdom, don't we? You going to kick that dog as hard as you did last week? If it was in the bulletin or not, but I read it this week. It was a good article. If, I, if it ain't in there, I'll send it out. You, how are you going to treat them employees you got, or your employer, or your teachers, or your students, or your, or your co-workers? Now you got a little wisdom walking this world, don't you? Just like those sons of Heth, they, boy, they respected Abraham. Why? He knew who God was. He had a little bit of wisdom. Now we're given that new creation. We have an incorruptible seed in us. We are set apart for God's use. I'm not my own. I'm bought with price. I'm His. I, I hope certain things happen. I'd like it a certain way. I like air conditioning, electricity. That's great. 
But I'm the Lord's. If he moves me to wherever, that's where I'm going to be. Do I like it? It don't matter if I like it. I'm his. That's what he wants. That's what's going to happen. We've been purchased. We've had some wisdom. We're set apart. We're made holy. As holy as we will ever be. You're going to grow in grace. You're going to grow in knowledge and understanding. But if a new life's been in you, that's incorruptible seed. Don't you dare say it's corruptible. What God says is holy is holy, Peter. <laughs> Don't you despise the day of small things. That creation we, we have in us is completely holy because of that payment of blood, that propitiation, that, that mercy seat, that bloody accepted sacrifice. The person and his work. What's that mean? I just gave you four things. To, Paul worded it this way, but of him, of the Father's eternal covenant, of that promise before time, ye are in Christ, who of God has made unto us wisdom. How can I be wise? I know him. And righteousness. How could, I ha- how could I have acts of a holy nature? That's his. His doing. His everything. Sanctification and redemption. That's all in him. What was promised and purchased for the child of God? Absolutely everything. Everything the holy God we've offended requires has been provided for us. It's been promised, <laughs> declared before time, and it's been purchased. And it's more abundant. That life is more abundant. It's exceedingly abundant. A sure resting place was promised. A sure resting place was purchased. And it was claimed. The justice, the right, the lawfulness of it, how accurate this was, how proper this was, how right it was, it was proclaimed. Look at verse 15. My Lord, hearken unto me, Ephraim said, the land is worth 400 shekels of silver. What's that betwixt me and thee? Bury therefore thy dead. And Abraham hearkened unto Ephron. He heard what he said. And Abraham weighed to Ephron the silver, which he had named in the audience of his sons of Heth, 400 shekels of silver, current with the merchant. Right in front of everyone. He said, I'm going to pay you, and I'm going to get current right now. Don always said it. Pay your bills. Like, that ain't hard, is it? (laughs) You got bills, pay, pay. You start considering what bills the Lord paid for his people. Uh, S, D, G, and E ain't no sweat no more, is it? What, does it need, what needs done? Do that. That's a child can figure that one out. But it was proclaimed right in front of everyone, this payment of full price. This was not a backroom deal. Do you understand that? Well, I have this knowledge, but I, nobody has to know about that. That's going to come out. What is that telling us? When the Father saw Christ's payment, do. When that payment for sin, go read Matthew 27 sometime. Oh, you get through that and worry about a football game? This, this earth went dark for three hours. The S U N went down when the S O N did. God turned his back on God, made him sin, unleashed his wrath. Sin ain't going to go unpunished. The world knew. The world knew. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. All mankind saw that, and some of them didn't give a hooey. That's, that's interesting. Let's go take a nap. Maybe it was an eclipse. <laughs> uh, but there was an empty tomb also, wasn't there? The Lord made sure us a resting place. His resting place became empty. And everybody knew that. Those guards, that, that stone's moved. Where, where is he? Oh, he said something about coming out of the grave. He's going to be in there three days. Jonah, I think I had something to do with it. What did he say again? Didn't have it wrote down. And they went running to the Pharisees. And when they were gone, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests and all the things that were done. They said, there's what happened. Them grave clothes, they're folded up. This wasn't in a rush. Somebody didn't do this in the dead of night and try to get that body out of here. This was plain. <laughs> the right payment was made. And this is proclaimed. We've seen it. And when they were assembled with the elders, 
and had taken counsel, they gave a large money unto the soldiers, saying, See, say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while he slept. Here's a bunch of money. You go say that you saw some people come take Christ out of that tomb. And if this has come to the governors, we'll persuade him and secure you. If it comes find out our life was found out, we'll, we'll, we'll go to bat for you. And so they took the money and did as they were taught. And this is a saying that's commonly reported among the Jews until this day. This wasn't done in the back room. This was proclaimed publicly and everybody knows it. We have a place of rest because there's an empty tomb. Well, this sure resting place was by promise. It was purchased fully at full price. It was proclaimed and it's practiced. It's going to play out. <laughs> it, will play, it has played out and it will be played out. We'll be brought and made to lie down in a city of refuge. That's what Hebron was. Yeah, that was one of the, the six cities of, he, of refuge. Right there, right in the middle of it. Where was she laid to rest? The city of refuge. How'd she get there? She was dead. Yes, yeah, somebody else brought her. She was, well, I have a hard time going to church, you know. And, well, we got drop ceilings, so if you got four buddies to lower you through, they ain't got to bust no tiles up. You'd be all right. <laughs> You'd go to the hospital grocery store. We'd sure find a way there, wouldn't we? This came to practice. She was brought there. It says in verse 19, And after this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Machpelah, before Mamre, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan. And the field and the cave that is therein were made sure unto Abraham for a possession of a burying place by the sons of Heth. That city of refuge. Remember that city of refuge? That's where the guilt, those people guilty of manslaughter. You done something, you don't know you did it. You went to war. I got a combat patch twice over from the 1st Infantry Division, Big Red 1. <laughs> I know I went to war. That was a time I was at war and didn't know it. I sat in a pew under the right pastor, the best one in our generation's ever heard of. I sat there and listened to him day in, day out, and I saw him in public, and I knew a whole bunch about him, and I knew what all his scriptures meant, and I had my doctrine down to a T. And then God one day showed me I was at war with him. I didn't know that. I didn't know I was, I was fighting his son tooth and toenail. I was a manslaughterer, and I ran to the city of refuge, and I didn't go look at the city of refuge, and I didn't go tell other people this is what the city of refuge is made out of. I went to the gate, to the door, crossed the door, and I said, I'm guilty. I said, come in. You live here till the high priest dies. <laughs> How long can we stay in that city of refuge? That high priest never going to die. I told you that the other day. He's after the order of Melchizedek. There's no beginning with him. There's no ending with him. We are safe and secure. We are protected. This was promised. It was purchased. It was proclaimed. It's practiced on. This actually happens. The Lord said, I, he shall save his people from their sin. He ain't going to lose a one of them. And we're protected in him. He's our city of refuge. He's our Hebron. Later, we're brought there. <laughs> Laid there. We ain't moving. How long was you safe in that city of refuge? As long as you didn't leave it. Will I be faithful to the end? I won't be. God keep me. You've saved me. You gave me life. Keep me living until the end. You must do it. That never changes. That never changes. Well, that's peace, isn't it? <laughs> you got a resting place? I sure do. You worry about where they're going to lay you when you die? <sighs> to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. It was made sure. We're made to lie down in green pastures until our high priest dies and he shall never die. Look at verse 17. In the field of Ephron, which was in Machpelah, which was before Mamre, the field, the cave which was therein, and all the trees that were in the field that were in all the borders round about it. Everything, everything were made sure unto Abraham for a possession. Verse 20, that's the first time it's mentioned. Here's the same thing again. That's one word, we're made sure. Verse 20. And the field and the cave that is therein were made sure unto Abraham for a possession of a burying place by the sons of Heth. How can we know? Now if I tell you, I'll be there Tuesday. I may be there Tuesday. I may not be there Tuesday. I can't, I can't do that. Well, if the field of Heth said this is yours forever. Well, maybe it is, maybe it ain't. How can it be made sure? You know what I mean? 
means? We're made sure. That's one word. It means risen. Raised up. It was raised up to Abraham. How can we know that this promise will come to pass? How can we know that that payment was effectual? It was proclaimed in my heart and not just in my head. I'm not 18 inches from salvation. How can I know that? How can I know I'll be eternally protected and safe? Christ is risen. He's risen. The Father is well pleased with Him. And in a great seminary term, all the work is D-U-N done. <laughs> it's plumb done. Ain't nothing else to do but, but praise Him. But praise Him. He's risen. Everything He said come to pass. Every bit of it. And I'm learning it more and more and more every day. He's proving His Word to be true to me. Again, well, don't you believe Him? Of course I do. And I'm going to learn something else tomorrow. I want to learn of Him. And that's important. You know why that's so important? I mean, this is... Hear me, child of God. <laughs> Y'all are reaching, reaching a toolbox. <laughs> Trying to tool. You listen to me. <laughs> you pay attention to me. Shake my finger. Do one of those. <laughs> if the dead raise not... If I'm not putting the ground, looking up, waiting for Christ, I'll be with Him, but this body. If the dead rise not, if there's no resurrection, as He said He would, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, if there's no eternal hope from these things, if it's just a good time bed story, and then we're going to end up being worm food, if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain, and you're still in your sins. Were it made sure to you? That's made sure to me. Why? Because he's risen. Isn't it? We have a promised place. Won't be long. James said, what, this life is like a vapor? Isn't it? Ah, oh, man, I'm telling you. I went to tell somebody asked me how old I was the other day. And I was off by three years. <laughs> and I don't expect you to remember my birthday. I ought to. It's mine. Getting quicker and quicker and quicker and quicker, isn't it? Life's a vapor. And we're going to meet the God we offended. And we'll either stand in Christ, perfect, accepted, beyond measure, complete in Him, or we'll stand next to Him in comparison to Him. It'll be one or the other. I take it serious. I want to tell all men that. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, thank You for this hour. Thank You for this Word that You've given us, Lord. Allow us to see Christ in it. Think on Him. Seek His glory and His kingdom before all else. Allow us to walk this earth, Lord, and this around sinners, these eternal souls that don't know they're at war with You. Allow us to be a light in this world. Don't let us bring reproach on the gospel. Don't let our, our witness be discredited and ruined because of what we are. Lord, keep us as you've promised you will. Protect us as you promised you will. Allow us to see that effectual payment and allow us to proclaim it, Lord. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Thank you for this hour. Forgive us for what we are. It's in Christ's name that we ask it. Amen.